going to talk a little bit about how to operate complex numbers. Okay, so this will be the first part of today's lesson. And then the next one, we're going to talk a little bit about quadratic and then f and finish up with the quadratic formula. Okay, so with the first thing, adding complex numbers. Um, so in this case, adding is very simple, right? In this case, uh, has to do, like say, I'll give you an example. We have uh, one complex number, 4 minus 7i. And then I have another complex number, 2 plus 2i. Just a review, complex number is a combination of a real number and an imaginary number. Once again, real and imaginary. Put together, it's a complex number. So this is one complex number, and this is another complex number. Say, for example, we're going to add the two complex numbers together. That's very simple. This is this is just going back to the very typical simplification of algebra expressions. You combine like terms. Combine like terms. right? So you write them all out. 4 minus 7i plus 2 plus 2i. Well, very simple. First one is a real number. Combi combining 4 and 2, you get 6. Negative 7i plus 2i, you end up with negative 5i. So then this is your answer. Okay, so adding and subtracting basically following the same rule. So in the in the sense we I'm gonna just add to the the, the heading uh, subtracting, right? So adding, subtracting, following the same uh, process operation. Easy enough? Now then we're gonna talk about multiplication. Multiplying complex numbers. So here's an example. When you have the same thing, 4 minus 7i and 2 plus 2i. In this case, instead of adding and subtracting, we simply just multiply them. Now this is just very similar to multiplying uh, binomials, right? And so what we do is we factor. So first one first, right? We um, not factor. We multiply, you know, doing FOIL. So four times two uh, is eight, uh, and then four times two i is positive eight i. Negative seven i times two is negative fourteen i. And then negative seven i times two i gives you negative fourteen i square. Okay, now we combine like term, we get eight, and then you got eight i minus fourteen i gives you negative six i. Over here you got negative fourteen i square, but we also know that i square is negative one. Once again, simplify again, 8 minus 6i. This is negative 14 times negative 1, gives you positive 14. So final answer, 22 minus 6i. Easy enough. Okay. Now, since we have multiplying, then we talk about uh, divide, right? Dividing. Dividing uh, complex numbers. So in a way, this is also talking about simplify. Right? We're simplifying complex number in fraction term. So say for example, today you're given this term 10 divided by 2 minus i. Well, you know, mathematically, there's nothing wrong with this expression. 10 minus 2i is a perfectly legitimate um, format, a term. There's nothing wrong with it. But, you know, we math students or teachers like to kind of 
you know, simplify things, kind of make it look slightly nice. And in this particular way, case, uh, you know, convention says that we don't like imaginary number in the denominator. Okay. Well, we know that we know that if you know i is square root of negative one, and we know that if somehow i gets squared, that's square root of negative one squared, which gives you negative one. So somehow, if we can be rid of the 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 i and then produce some sort of i square, then we turn the imaginary number into a real number, right? Now, since bottom part is two minus i, now we also take take note of the fact that we have learned something like this before. If you have a minus b, and then you somehow multiply by a plus b, you will end up with a squared minus b squared. Now, vice versa, if you have a plus b, then you some if you can multiply by a minus b, you get the same thing. So in this case, you got something like a minus b, right? Two minus i. I can assume I can designate a to two or two to a, and then negative i to to b. So in a sense, we have we have um, a minus b on the bottom. So so what I can do is I can um, decide to multiply a. Uh, or two plus i in this case. Now we also know, right? Fraction, you can't just put stuff in the denominator or put stuff on the numerator without doing a proper treatment, because otherwise, otherwise you fundamentally change the the value of that fraction. So if you do something like that, you have to multiply. The same thing in the in the numerator, so two minus i. So you end up with a two minus uh, two plus i. Two minus i on the bottom multiplied by two plus i. Hey, oftentimes you can take the same two terms except switching the sign between. This thing we often call this a conjugate. Okay. So sometimes teachers will say, hey, you know, like when you some when you have a certain situation multiplied by its con conjugate. Then that's one you know one way to proceed uh, your solution process. So in this case, right on the bottom you have a minus b times a plus b that gives you a squared minus b squared, where a is two, b is i. So I end up with two squared minus i squared on the bottom. Bottom. Now I leave it alone for now because I want to just simplify one step at a time. So on the top, I get twenty plus. 10i on top. All right, so the so top is 20 plus 10i. The bottom we end up with 4. Now, 4 minus i squared. Now, i squared is negative 1. So I end up with 4 minus 1. Right, so that's that's uh, that's 5 on the bottom, 20 on the top plus 10i, right? 20 plus 10i on the top, and divide by 5. Okay, so if you look at this, you basically have two terms on the top, one term on the bottom, right? So in some way, you, you can also look at it as 20 over 5 plus 10i over 5. So you can, just, you, can, you can simplify this, right? You can simplify this as 4, and then plus 2i. There you go. There is the answer. Simple enough. Okay. Now, what we want to do uh, here is gonna we're gonna try to combine the two concepts, right? Quadratic and complex. So the main topic here is to solve a quadratic equation that results in right that that uh, resulting in complex numbers 
Now, oftentimes, you wouldn't know that your solution for a quadratic equation is going to end up with a complex number uh, right away. Uh, you discover on the way. I just don't want you to be surprised, and I want you to be able to know how to respond to that when you realize, well, wait a minute, this, this answer looks strange. But within that strangeness, we should, you know, we should anticipate, so how to solve that problem. So let's take an example in this case. We got 49x squared plus 4 equal to 0. Now, this is a very simple quadratic, uh, quadratic equation or, or equation that involves quadratic. So what we do is, right, this is very simple. It only takes two terms. One has a square term, one is a number, a constant term. So then what we can do is we move the constant to the other side of the equation, uh, try to solve this problem by isolating the x, right? So you, you move that uh, 4 into the other side of the equation, turn it into a negative 4. Okay, then we do. We want to isolate the x, right? So, since so x is that with the x squared term, then uh, there's a constant in front of 49. So we divide by 49 on both sides, right? You can divide by 49 on both sides. So then you end up with x squared is equal to negative 4 over 49. Okay. So if you have x squared equal to something, then your natural uh, response will be, well, that's square root. But when we square root x squared, since this is in the, in the context of an equation, you square root on one side of the equation, you must do the same on the other side. Right? So you square root on both sides of the equation. Square root x squared equal to, right, negative 4, 49, square root. But when you square root on both sides of the equation, right, naturally the consequence is that you think about it as if in reverse, if you square root on both sides of the equation, that means you could have done square on the other side of the equation and to get back to the, uh, the original number. So if you square on a solution, that solution can be a negative as well, because when you square the negative, it can get back to your original solution. So in this case, when you square root on both sides, you naturally end up with two answers. So let me, let me just explain, right? Let me just write it out nicely here. You get x is equal to square root of negative 4 over 49, and x is equal to negative square root of negative 4 over 49. Okay, put a comma in between. For the comma in between. Okay, very, very good. So let's keep going. In this case, right, square root of negative 4 over 49 is essentially 4 over 49 times negative 1. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing over here negative square root of 4 over 49 times negative 1. Well, we know that square root of 4 over 49 is just 2 over 7. And then so you end up with a negative 1, uh, square root of negative 1 over there. x is equal to, right, negative 2 sevenths, and then square root of negative 1. And we know that square root of negative 1 is i, so x is equal to 2 sevenths, um, i, and x is equal to negative 2 sevenths, i. That's why you got two answers. And your answer is in is is a is an imaginary uh, value, which is okay. Um, you know, sometimes you just end up with an imaginary answer. Uh, visually, graphically, that means that in this case, it's impossible to have um, uh, x square that will intersect right with a negative four. Over 49. If you, if you look at it this way, uh, this essentially is saying that you have an equation over here, uh, x squared, f of x equal to x squared, and then negative 2 seventh is probably over here, negative 2 seventh, right, which is negative, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, negative 4 49th. 4 49th is this number, right, this number, and you will notice that. Uh, you know, if you have a line coming across like this, they will never intersect. So that means you're never going to get 
a real value for solution because those two functions don't 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 intersect with each other, but they could intersect on, on the imaginary uh, uh, space. That's basically the idea. All right. Moving on to the next one, we're gonna talk about. Now we move away from complex for now. We move right back to the the, the whole unit, which is on quadratic uh, function and quadratic equation. And so one uh, one more technique that I wanna just be able to show it on video is uh, solve quadratic uh, equation by completing square by completing squares. I believe I mentioned it uh, before in, a, in one of the previous lessons or lectures, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do one more uh, problem just so that you can see the process and the, and the rationale and the logic that goes with it, okay? Example, x squared plus 14x plus 49 is equal to 25. So we have a trinomial on one side. This is a quadratic function, right? So it's a parabola that is intersecting with a straight line, uh, a horizontal line at uh, 25, right? So uh, if I would imagine this 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 equation, uh, this will this will have a, a, a vertex and a y-intercept at 49, right? And then you have a straight line going across 25, and it will be hitting uh, two values. Okay, so so that's really really a visualization, you know. And and if I would just venture to guess, it's it's probably gonna look look something like uh, you know. Um, let me see. Um, it could look like something like this and then 25 yeah 25 will be hitting these two values and then so you want to say oh what's the x value here x value there so that's basically what we're trying to solve we're trying to solve uh, the, the the value the location on x value on x axis where uh, this horizontal line at 25 is going to hit the, the parabola. Okay, that's the visualization. Now, we're going to algebraically solve this problem. And so, one, the, one way I can do this, and there's multiple ways of solving this, but if the problem calls for completing square, uh, this is what you do. x squared plus 14x. Then what you do is you move the 49 to the other side. And you say it's 25 minus 49, All right? So let me just making sure that I, I line up my equal sign. Uh, X squared plus 14X equal to negative 24. The, the idea here is that I need to figure out how to make this thing a complete square, something, something parentheses square. So the idea, the goal is I want to be able to make something like, you know, parentheses square equal to whatever this might be. Okay. Uh, the one way to do this, right, we have uh, known about this. Uh, we take advantage of um, A plus B, uh, uh, a, a plus B square is equal to A square plus 2AB plus B square. You remember that, right? And so in order to get to that B, you take this number, right? You take this number, you take this number, which is 14, you divide by 2, okay? That's basically your B. Your B Right, your a in this case is one, right? Because there's a coefficient in front of the x squared, but b in this case is a constant, so it's taking this middle number uh, and then divide by two. Now this number sits right here, has to be the b squared, right? So you got a squared plus two ab 
plus b squared in order to get to a plus b squared. So the b squared must be 14 over 2 squared. Now if you do the same, if you, if you add 14 over 2 squared, which is 7 squared, right, 7 squared, uh, you must add exactly the same thing on the other side, plus, uh, let's just do 7 squared, which is exactly the same as 14 over 2, right? So then over here, then you end up with x plus 7, parenthesis squared, is equal to uh, negative, uh, oh, I'm sorry, is negative 24 plus 7 squared, which is 49. So then you end up with x plus 7, print c squared, you end up with 25. Oh, that's perfect, right? You have something squared is equal to 25, then that something, right, then must be you can use square root on both sides, that means this must be 5 or x plus 7. Remember we just talked about it earlier in a previous example. When you square root on both sides, you end up with a positive value and a negative value. So you're going to have 5 and uh, negative 5. So you end up with x is equal to 5 minus 7 or x is equal to negative 5 minus 7. So you end up with x is equal to negative 2, or x is equal to negative 12. So you got two answers. Well, that kind of, that, that in many ways, kind of is consistent to where the graph shows, right? At least the, the way that I, I guess, uh, and intuitively guess, simply because I've done many problems, uh, so I can quickly see. Uh, so that's why those two uh, answers are here. Right? It could be negative 12 right here and negative 2 over here. And those are the intersecting point. Okay? Now, here is where I'm going to... Th th this is where um, we are going to go doing problem backward. We're going to go from solutions to the equation. So here is finding fine quadratic equations with given solutions. Okay? You'll know what I mean. Example, the two solutions of a quadratic uh, equation are negative 5 and 4. And then the question is, find the quadratic equation. Okay, so you, you, you're going backward. But well, this is what we can take advantage, right? We, we oftentimes, if we take a quadratic equation, we try to factor, right? We often try to factor it out into a, uh, a you know, a minus, uh, x minus a, x minus b, and set equals zero, right? And then we oftentimes then say, oh, that makes sense, then a must be, uh, x must be a, x must be b. So, so we often go from this direction, right? from this step to this step. For, for the case like this, we basically start with the bottom and we're gonna work our way up, right? Because this thing can become a more complex looking equation, but complex looking equation starts with a simplified form. So if, if we have, if we have, you know, one of the answers is negative five, one of the answers is four, then what we can do, we can say, okay, then let's just set this as negative 5 here, and then 4 here, and then put it back into this, this form. So, x minus negative 5, and then put that into parentheses, and then x minus 4, and set it equals 0. Now, the idea is that I'm going to keep going to make it more complicated instead of simplifying into factor forms. I'm going to expand this out and see what, what this leads. 
right? So let me simplify this a little bit. x plus 5 times x minus 4 is equal to 0. So I will just go ahead and do FOIL, right? And so I end up with x squared minus 4x plus 5x minus 20 equals 0. Then your answer is x squared plus x minus 20 equal to 0. And guess what? This was the original quadratic equation. That would give you the answer of negative 5 and 4. Does that make sense? Okay. So, here is uh, a twist. So, next problem is you got two solutions. of a quadratic, okay? And there are two minus i and one plus two i. Well, wait a minute. So the solution is a complex number. Solutions are complex numbers. Well, no fear, you do exactly the same thing. Right? You set this as a and you set this as b, then you put it back into x minus a times x minus b equals 0, right? x minus a, x minus b equals to 0. So you do exactly the same thing. So you say x minus, now a is 2 minus i, so put parentheses around, 2 minus i. Now notice I'm very careful with parentheses. Something that gets grouped together, I always just remember to put a parentheses around. Because guess what? This negative is going to change the, the negative i if you expand it out. But I don't want to lose track of that. So I make sure when I write, I don't drop any parentheses when I go through the first round. Right? And then x minus b, so x minus b, and b is a parenthesis of those two terms, so I make sure I put parentheses around that, 1 plus 2i, parenthesis, instead of equal to 0. OK, well then, guess what? I'll just do for you. I have two terms, right? So this one first, I get x squared, and then I get this one, right, minus 1 plus 2i this times x. And then this one, go over here, then we got negative 2 minus i times x, right, and then this over here plus uh, Oh, sorry. I think I made a mistake here. Let's do it one more time. x times x is x squared. x times that term right there, b, is minus 1 plus 2i um, times x. Right? And then now, taking the second term, multiply over, we got uh, negative, parenthesis, 2 minus i times x. And then take this one times this one. We end up with a negative and negative will give you positive. 2 minus i times 1 plus 2i and equal to 0. Okay. I just want to make sure that I don't drop anything. Uh, when, when there are so many terms, it's easy to make uh, mistakes. Okay. So now, um, ready to expand this out. So I end up with x squared minus 1 my, my, uh, min, minus parenthesis x plus 2xi, right? Minus 2x parenthesis 2x minus xi. plus 2 plus 4i minus i minus 2i squared equal to, each, equal to 0. Okay.
just want to make sure I didn't drop anything and make any mistakes. Uh, x multiplying into here, you got x 2i x 2xi. Okay, bring this in here, 2x, and then xi, and then you got 2 times 1, so it's 2, 4i, negative i, and then negative 2i squared. Okay, now I have some printers here, negative in front, so I can, let's that, simplify this a little bit more. We end up with x squared minus x minus 2xi minus 2x plus xi plus 2 plus 4i minus i minus 2 times negative 1 because i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, so usually I go much faster, but this is for your sake. I'm spelling out every single part. So we have x squared. Now we had uh, just, we have a negative x and negative 2x terms. So combined like term, you get negative 3x. Okay, so we got uh, two, negative 2xi plus xi, then we end up with a negative uh, xi or I'll write it ix, okay? We have over here 4i minus i, which is plus 3i. And then negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2. And 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, so you end up with 0. One could, one could continue to make this since, uh, you, you know, we have x squared and then the x term. We can make it into uh, minus uh, 3 plus i parentheses x plus parentheses 3i plus 4. So you see there's a complex number. There's a complex number. And this is your quadratic. Pretty complicated, isn't it? But you can solve it. Not a problem. All right. This ends uh, today's lesson. And the next lesson, I will talk about quadratic formula. See you.